In this lecture, we're going to look at several examples of infinite impulse response filter design, and we'll use MATLAB to perform our designs. Before we begin, let's recap how we design infinite impulse response filters. First of all, infinite impulse response filter has this recursive structure in its difference equation. That is what gives it an infinite impulse response because the present value of the output depends on past values of the output through these coefficients a, k, and then the input also influences the present output through coefficient b, k. So the filter design problem is to find coefficients a, k, and b, k such that this filter will satisfy the specifications on its frequency response. So with IIR filters, we're for the most part limited to doing frequency selective designs, that is filters that have pass bands and stop bands. So we'll begin by choosing a prototype continuous time low pass filter, we'll call that HLP of S, and that could be a Butterworth filter or a Chebyshev type 1 or 2 or an elliptic filter. Then next we'll pre-warp the critical frequencies of our design. So we will take the frequencies of the discrete time filter, such as pass band edges and stop band edges, and map them into the corresponding frequencies that will be required for the continuous time filter. And this mapping is chosen so that when we later apply the bilinear transform to convert from continuous time to discrete time, our critical frequencies end up where we want them to be. Next, we apply a frequency transformation to our low pass filter to convert it to the desired type. For example, we may wish to convert our low pass filter to a band pass filter, in which case we use a low pass to band pass frequency transformation. And then finally, once we have a continuous times filter that satisfies our specifications, we can convert that to a discrete time filter by replacing the continuous time Laplace transform variable S tilde with the bilinear transform or 2 times 1 minus z inverse divided by 1 plus z inverse. Now this sequence of steps could be somewhat tedious and prone to errors if we do it by hand, but MATLAB has all of this built in so that we can automatically go through these steps with a series of very simple commands. And that's what we're going to use in our examples here today. While MATLAB has chosen to implement filter design following these particular four steps, there are also other approaches that one can take that involve the bilinear transform and frequency transformations. For example, one could apply the bilinear transform to the low-pass continuous time prototype filters to obtain low-pass prototype discrete time filters and then apply discrete time frequency transformations to those prototype filters to get the desired pass band response. So there's more than one way to approach this problem, but we're going to use this particular approach because it is what's followed in MATLAB. So the first example, we're going to look at a low pass filter and we're going to compare Butterworth, Chebyshev 1 and 2 and elliptic filter designs. So our specifications are given in terms of this tolerance diagram here where we've shown the pass band goes from 0 to 0.2 pi radians and the gain in the pass band must lie between 0.9 and 1. Then the stop band starts at 0.3 radians and in the stop band we're requiring a gain of 10 to the minus 3 or less in the stop band. And when we use MATLAB, it works with frequency in normalized units. So we take our frequency in units of radians, which is omega, and we'll divide by pi. So the frequencies that are specified in MATLAB lie between 0 and 1, where 1, of course, corresponds to omega equals pi. And secondly, the ripple is expressed in dB. A couple of commands here to specify these terms, we're going to take our passband edge, which is 0.2 pi, and we're going to divide it by pi to normalize it. We'll take our stop band edge, which is 0.3 pi, again, normalized frequency. The lowest amplitude we tolerate in the passband is 0.9, so our passband ripple is negative 20 times log 10 of 0.9. 
And note that it's assuming that our ripples are specified in terms of positive values of dB, so hence the minus sign here. The same thing with the attenuation. We're going to take the value that we wish to have for our maximum gain in the stop band, which is 10 to the minus 3, and we'll convert that to an attenuation in the stop band using minus 20 times log 10 of 10 to the minus 3. So once we've set up these parameters which specify our filter, we go through two steps in MATLAB. First of all, we're going to find the order of the filter. What MATLAB does is it uses these specifications and then solves for the order and another parameter or two associated with that particular filter type. And I'm showing here the command for a Chebyshev 1 filter. So it solves for these parameters using the tolerance specifications for our filter. So it finds the order by using the known form for the Chebyshev filter and doing some algebraic manipulations to obtain that order and some other parameters that are specified in the filter. And then we can find the coefficients of the filter. In this case, the Chebyshev filter coefficients. The Bs are the coefficients that are applied to the input, and the A's are the coefficients that are applied to the pass values of the output when we're computing the filter. The different types of filters, for example, Butterworth or elliptical, may require different parameters here in this command. So I'm just illustrating the Chebyshev one, and this will give us the filter coefficients. So here's the frequency response magnitudes and you'll note that our attenuation in the stop band of 10 to the minus 3 translates to a gain of negative 60 dB. The Butterworth filter, to satisfy these specifications, requires a 17th order filter, which is quite high. If we look at the Chebyshev type 1 filter, remember that's going to have ripple in the pass band. The order ends up being 9, and again, you can see that by the time you get to 0.3 pi, the gain is below negative 60 dB. The elliptic filter actually requires an order of only 6. You can see again that it satisfies the specifications by having minus 60 dB for the ripple down here, and we have again some passband ripple. And then the Chebyshev type 2 filter needs the same order as the Chebyshev type 1 filter, that of 9 in this case, it satisfies the specifications in the pass band, and then we have minus 60 dB of ripple in the stop band. So all four of these filters satisfy the specifications. The difference is that they require different orders to do so. You can see that by allowing ripple in both the pass band and the stop band, we end up with the lowest order filter of these four. And by having a monotonic response, in the pass band and the stop band, such as with the Butterworth filter, we actually require quite a high order filter relative to the other cases. We can also look at the group delay for these four filters, and we've written the order for the filters in the table here on the right. And what you see is that all of them have nonlinear phase because the group delay is not a constant. As you get near the band edge, the passband was from 0 to 0.2 in normalized units. Near the passband edge, the group delay tends to increase, more so for the two classes of filters that allow ripple in the passband, the Chebyshev 1 and the elliptic filter. Normally, the phase distortion of a Butterworth filter is less so than other filters, but in this case, we're using a very high order Butterworth filter, 17, compared to our other filters, and that explains why we have the consequent uh, group delay variations. Here you can see that the Chebyshev type 2 filter has perhaps the least distortion in that the variability between 0 and, say, 0.15 pi is only a couple samples of group delay. And even at the passband edge, we have only maybe 10 samples more group delay. That filter has a smooth monotonic response in the passband, and it's a fairly low order relative to the Butterworth filter. 
Now for a second example, we're going to look at a bandpass filter design, and we'll compare a Butterworth and elliptic design. So again, we have to specify our pass bands and our stop bands in terms of normalized frequency. We're showing our pass band from 2 pi over 5, or 0.4 pi, to 0.6 pi. And then our stop band goes from 0 to 0.2 pi. And then again from 0.8 pi to pi. So the commands that MATLAB uses, it requires that the pass band be specified in one vector, normalized frequency. We specify the stop bands in another vector with normalized frequency. And then our ripples in the pass band and the stop band are given in dB. So in this case, we've got a pass band ripple between 1 and 0.95. And then in the stop band, we're assuming the gain is less than 0.01. So we can find as before, our filter order by first giving these specifications, our tolerance parameters, to a function that computes the order and then some other parameters that are needed for the design. And then we get our filter coefficients by providing those parameters as well as passband ripple and the stop band attenuation. Here we've displayed the frequency response magnitudes for these two filters you can see that we needed to have 40 dB of attenuation, which corresponds to a gain of 0 0.01, in the stop bands, 0 to 0.2. And then above 0.8, we also have 40 dB of attenuation with the Butterworth filter. And you can see there's very little ripple in the pass band, which is from 0.4 pi to 0.6 pi. Now the elliptic filter, on the other hand, has ripple in both the stop bands and the pass band. And you see that we're at 40 dB of attenuation in the lower stop band, as well as 40 dB of attenuation in the upper stop band. And then in the pass band, we, between 0.4 and 0.6, we have the slight ripple associated with the gain varying from 0.95 to 1. So both of these filters satisfy the specifications. One of the observations about the elliptic filter actually exceeds the specifications, because right here, it's down by 40 dB already, as it is up here. So the, the stop band is actually wider than what we specified. It goes to something like 0.28 pi and starts here at 0.72 pi. And the reason that happens is because your filter order is going to be chosen as an integer. And if you recall, when we have a bandpass filter, we use a low pass to bandpass frequency transformation that frequency transformation involves a quadratic and so it doubles the order of the filter. So the prototype low pass filter in this case is going to be order 3. And it turns out that an order 2 filter wouldn't satisfy the specifications in the end. And the order 3 filter actually exceeds the specifications. So we end up using the order 3 filter which after we apply the frequency transformation becomes an order 6 filter. So if you've watched all the videos about the design procedures, starting with analog or continuous time low pass filters and frequency transformations and the bilinear transform, there's quite a bit that is going on under the hood in MATLAB, but it's quite easy to use and come up with relatively decent filter designs. It's particularly important when you do use MATLAB to design a filter that you always check to make sure that the frequency response indeed does satisfy your specifications because sometimes there can be numerical problems or other issues that arise and you don't want to then go ahead and use such a filter without having verified that it works first.